Hi, and welcome to the Changing Perspectives podcast, the show where we discuss a variety of topics, including grief, parenting, health and wellness, and relationships. Join us and explore a number of changing perspectives. We're your hosts, Jenny and Josh Brennan, although that's not exactly true, is it, Jacob? Nope. So Jenny is not with us on this episode. It's Josh and Jacob Brennan. How are you, Jacob? Good. Playing the role of Jenny today will be none other than associate producer extraordinaire and um, expert football player, expert football fan, Jacob Brennan. How are you doing, sir? Good. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm so pleased to be joined by you today. Jenny is unavailable for this pint-sized perspective uh recording so we decided to have J- uh, jacob join us hope everybody's doing well we're on episode 43 this will be a pint-sized perspective it's coming at you with a pint-sized perspective on a topic that's near and dear to our family's hearts which is football we love football uh, we decided to have jacob join us as the uh, substitute co-host for today um, and talk to you guys about our favorite sport. Hope we have lots of football fans around the Changing Perspective uh, fan universe. Um, we're going to be talking about a little bit about fantasy football. We talk about playing football, maybe coaching football a little bit, and being just fans of football uh, today. And we are recording this during football season. If you happen to be listening to this outside of the football season, I hope you can still enjoy this. This is a very topical, sort of timely, pint-sized perspective um, coming at you today. Hey, just as a reminder, don't forget to like us, review us, and follow us on all the social medias. Give us a like and a follow and a review on um, or subscribe on iTunes that allows us to be able to grow our listenership and bring you even more great content. Uh, don't forget as well, another shameless plug, go ahead and visit JennyBrennan.com uh, on the resources page, click visit the shop so you can check out all that great changing perspectives, merchandise, uh, which is basically some apparel. Uh, Jacob, have you purchased any changing perspectives gear yet no you haven't no why not because you won't let me i we won't let you no we will let you then of course you let me? mom mom will buy it for you but hey been asking. do me a favor co-host talk right into that microphone i am that's good that's even better <laughs> excellent so listen i want to talk to you about we're going to talk to everybody today about football i want to talk to you specifically about football I know that it's your favorite sport. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Favorite sport. Okay. So as we're going to talk a little bit later about you being a football player, right? And what you like most about playing football. But talk to me about what you like most about being a football fan. What do you like most about this sport, Jacob? I don't really know. All of it. All of it. Okay. No, um, you know, no specific preference or something that just speaks to you about this game. It's just all in all the game of football you love. I kind of like when there was like roster changes. Roster changes. Okay. You like the science behind football, right? Like how football works, like how you move from a defense to an offense and how there's a whole different group of people on special teams and all that kind of stuff. You like the science behind specializing. football. Specializing. You yeah. really you get really into how drafts work and how movements work, um, who's doing what this particular season, who did it last season. You like the science behind football. Is that fair to say? Yeah. And you like... Um, when it comes to playing football, I think that you like different things about playing the sport, which we'll get to. Um, <clears throat> but I wanted I wanted you to go ahead and tell everybody on in uh, Changing Perspectives listener world who your favorite. Let's start with college football because this family are super big college football fans, correct? Yeah. Yes. Um, but we all love different teams, right? Let's, let's talk about your favorite team. Go ahead. You're wearing a sweatshirt right now. Clemson Tigers. Clemson Tigers, baby. Defending um, college football champs, right? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, great uh, championship game last season there, uh, coached by Dabo Sweeney. Who's your favorite player right now? On Clemson? Yeah. Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence, uh, stud quarterback in his sophomore year. Um, just doing really well. They're playing. We're we're recording this in the fall of 2019 uh, on a Saturday. We happen to be co- uh, recording this on College Football Saturday, and so Clemson plays tonight in about an hour or so from when we're recording this. So we're excited to see them play. My favorite team right now is Notre Dame, uh, and they are they have actually just finished their game, and they destroyed. Uh, New Mexico, sixty-six to fourteen. Oh my god! So play like a champion today, baby. It's a good day to be Irish. I love it. Um, but listen, that matchup. A lot of these matchups, Jacob. What do you think about these matchups with like these powerhouse teams in the FBS, like um, Clemson, Notre Dame, Alabama, Georgia? Georgia beat up on somebody today. Who was it? Um, again, this is very topical, and I apologize. They beat up on Arkansas State, fifty-five to zero. Oh, Georgia Bulldogs, baby! And I, you know what? Probably I, I. All right, listen. When I first started being a fan of football, it was all about the Patriots. We're we are changing perspectives. We're based in New England. Um, we've talked about this in many episodes. We love New England sports. Love the New England Patriots in particular. And I was always a big NFL fan, big Patriots fan growing up when I was little all the way through um, you know, my 20s and becoming a dad and all that. Over the past few years when you guys, you and Jackson became even bigger football fans, bigger sports fans, we really as a family started really getting into college football. And I got to tell you, um, I think I like to watch college football even better than I watch NFL. I, I look forward to college football more than NFL. What do you think? Where do you fall? Is it NFL or is it college football for you? NFL. NFL, like I, okay. I know most, like, pretty much like 10 players or like, okay. 20 players on each team. So I like know oh, like, this guy did good and this guy didn't do good. Like, But so I do you... Do you have a connection from fo- college football to NFL? Do, like, do you know who played where, um, where they came from a little bit? Is that connection there for you? Yeah, only, but I only know like the best of the best of the best players. Okay, so top level, top tier. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go back to college football for a second. We uh, Again, big college football fans. I might be the biggest, biggest college football fan in the house. Although Jacob and Jackson love, they have their specific teams. Uh, and we already revealed that Jacob is a gigantic Clemson fan, big Dabo Sweeney, big Trevor Lawrence um, fan. His his team plays tonight. Jackson is a is a Crimson Tide fan, baby. He's a Bama fan. Um, and they were actually struggling in their game today. Jacob, did you see that game at all? No. So, yeah, they were struggling a little bit, uh, but they seem to be doing much better now. It, uh, a slow start against the Gamecocks. Um, it was like 14-10 to 10 coming into the second quarter. Uh, and South Carolina is a team that Alabama should really beat up on. It should be like a 50, excuse me, 55-0 or 66-10 type of game versus South Carolina. But they were struggling a little bit. They're beating them now. It's currently 34 to uh, 13. And again, I apologize. This is a very topical and uh, dated episode if you happen to be listening to this months or weeks from now uh, from when we're recording it. But um, again, this is just a sport that this family loves. Um, Jackson is a gigantic Crimson Tide fan. Um, So when it comes to college football playoffs every year, right, Jacob? Every, uh, college football championship game, um, multiple times actually, I believe. Um, it's been quite fun in this family because we have a Clemson fan, we got a Bama fan, and they go head to head, and it's a lot of fun. Good competition, fun stuff. And not to mention, we haven't even got to my team yet, which. Um, Let's keep it that way. Yeah, well, no, you used to like them. You used to be a, a fan. I think you're still a fan. And we all have our secondary teams, right? I don't want to reveal my first team quite yet, but I love Louisville. I got a play, special place in my heart for Louisville. Um, I love BC just because we're 
from this area. I love UCF, Central Florida fan. I, I, I just think they're like a Cinderella story. Um, I saw a stat today, and um, they had an, they have an unbelievable winning record. Do you have any guesses? All right, since 2017, Jacob, do you have any guesses as to how many wins and losses UCF has from 2017? I'm talking two years now. Up to, to, to date in 2019, what do you think? How many wins and losses? Yep. I have no idea. 27 and 1. They've had one loss. I think 27 is the number. I may need to look that up. It's in the 20s for sure. That's insane. It's insane. And their loss was against uh, LSU in the Fiesta Bowl last year. Their one loss in, in two years. Unbelievable football program. It's a system. They've established a system. And a lot of, this, a lot of the um, sports radio guys I listen to, sports news guys, talk about the system. And I think that's why the Patriots are so successful. They establish a system. And I think UCF um, is able to establish a very similar type of system where um, you know they don't rely on studs or superstars. They rely on the system of football. Um, so I think that's why UCF does so well. But let's, without further ado, let's go ahead and reveal to everybody who my favorite college football team is, and that would be who? Notre Dame Irish. Notre Dame Fighting Irish, baby. Absolutely. Play like a champion today. I am a gigantic Irish fan. I started as a young football fan as a child. I'm, in my childhood, I became a, a Notre Dame fan and have loved them ever since. And um, last year, we were really excited. Their 2018 season, um, they were top four. They made it to the college football playoffs. They lost um, in the first game. But um, really excited about this year. Um, we got a really great quarterback. Uh, again, um, our head coach is coming into his 10th season, 11th season or something like do, that. It's been around for a while. Do you know any NFL players that came from Notre Dame? Well, I know um, we have the oh. illustrious, wonderful Will Fuller, wide receiver for really? the Texans. Yeah. Will Fuller. I love Will Fuller. He's Kaiser. huge. Uh, Deshaun Kaiser, I think. Who? Where is he now? Packers. Back up. Packers, yeah. Back up to the Packers. Deshaun Kaiser is a unique quarterback. Um, he is a running quarterback, but he's got a great arm. Um, had a lot of rushing yards at Notre Dame, but um, again, he's a good, like... Um, like NFL quarterback, very similar to to my current favorite quarterback in college football. Who in the FBS right now? Who do you think is my favorite college football quarterback? Tua. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Jackson. He's he's really good. He's really good. He reminds me of Kyler Murray a little bit. Mm. Um, no, Who's not it? Tua. Jake Fromm. He's my, he's he's my favorite. He's not a superstar stud athlete though. He's just a good quarterback. Mm -hmm. Like a good old fashioned throwback Tom Brady, Brett Favre, Peyton Manning, that type of Peyton Manning. Well, Tate Manning's a, he was a stud okay, in, yeah, in his right. day. I just don't like him. But uh you know Aaron Rodgers, it's he's Jake Fromm is that type of quarterback. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's not a Lamar Jackson. He's not a Kyler Murray. Um, I would even think, I would even suggest he's not a... Um, Cam Newton? No, he's not Cam Newton for sure. Or even, why am I blanking on the Browns quarterback? Baker Mayfield. He's not a Baker Mayfield. He's just, he's a tall general. He's a good yeah. leader of a team who can manage a game, manage the field, got a great arm. Um, he's got some... Like athleticism too he can move when he has to he's kind of like joe flacco if he was better mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i would agree absolutely um but anyway that's our uh carlich football uh sort of overview with this uh with our family what do you think anything to add on college football no except that um clemson beat Alabama 44 to 16 last year that was that was a rough game for bama um, Clemson showed up, decided to play their butts off, and Bama decided to not show up. Um, and that was tough for Mr. Uh, Jackson, right, yeah. <laughs> on that game. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and move on to NFL. 
Um, why don't we talk about fantasy fo- football? Excuse me for a few minutes. All right, so you we're in a league together, Jacob. You and me yeah. and Jake uh, and Jenny, um, mom and Jackson. Jackson. We've done this for a while, right? We've done um, a, a fantasy football together for a few years, um, and we are in a league together. Uh, obviously, we're at this point in the season. We're one game in. I'm facing uh, mom this week, and let's talk about. Let's talk about our roster. So are you comfortable? Are you happy with your lineup this year? Yeah, very happy. Okay. So who is your um, favorite, I guess, pick for this year? What Who, who are you most excited about? Metcalf, Deacon Metcalf. Metcalf, really? Why? Because he's, he's a wide receiver, and but he's got the shape of a linebacker. Or yeah. The speed of a running back. He's amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. And let me just say real quick, I love how much you love this game and how well you know this game. That's really, really cool. Um, so I think my standout player, the player I'm most excited about, um, well, I, that's going to change, actually. Go? What's before, that? Before you say yours, I, I, like, I also have an AB, so I got like the most stacked wide receiver line. If he gets on the field, hopefully. Oh, only time will tell. Just, only time will tell. We got A.B., Metcalf, um, Michael Thomas, Mike Evans, Keenan Allen, and uh, yeah, Josh Gordon. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So I have Barkley, Saquon Barkley. I'm sorry that my phone is not on silent. It keeps going off. Um, Sa- I have Saquon Barkley. I'm really excited about that. Um, I think he's an excellent player. He's projected to do really well every week in the fantasy um, football sort of projection stats. Um, I think that running backs and receivers obviously both can um, positively affect you the most in fantasy. A lot of people go for quarterbacks first when it comes to draft time, um, but I think you can hold off on a quarterback because you really do need to have... There's 32 of them and they're all right. pretty good. They're studs. I mean, there's a couple of duds in there, but most of them are studs. Um, Cousins, but... Yeah, well, yeah. Um, but I think that good, having a good quarterback... I'm sorry, good running back, good receiver, good flex position, and tight end uh, will get you exactly where you need to be um, every week in fantasy football. I've been playing fantasy football for a long time, um, right out of college, pretty much. Um, I enjoy it. I've had really bad seasons, really good seasons. Uh, I also get involved a little bit just recently. I'm new. I'm new to DraftKings, but I wanted to shout out DraftKings. That's a lot of fun. Um, you know, sort of one game at a time, one weekend at a time, little competition. So DraftKings, if you haven't checked that out, check out DraftKings. That's fun. Um, but fantasy football is a lot of fun as well, and this year I think I I lucked out in our league, Jacob. Um, I have Ezekiel Elliott, and I I definitely need to start him this week. I think over um, what would you say? I have Leonard Fournette or Ezekiel Elliott. I mean, I, or I'm sorry, Barkley, Fournette, and Elliott. It should be Barkley and Elliott, right? To start. Yeah, or I don't know about Elliott though. Ezekiel he's, Elliott, he's projected to do really well. What do you What do you mean you don't? They're playing. They're playing the Redskins. Did he play last week? I don't think he played. Yeah, he he played last week. Uh-huh. He got some well, touches. Like some drama going on. There is some drama. There's That's drama so all the time. There's drama with Antonio Brown. There's drama all over the place, um, and of course, um, changing perspectives. Obviously, uh, we're not going to get into any sort of. Um, uh, controversial topics or whatever whatever. there's um some sort of uh pendle pending legal stuff going on with antonio brown right now uh and and uh whatever we're not going to talk about that but there's drama all the time with these players um i just got a notification that tyreek hill is out this week do you know why that is i don't know oh he's got a that injury that's right um i totally forgot um, he's got a shoulder injury, so I have to put him on the bench. I have uh, Hilton. I have Amari Cooper. 
I think Cooper. What do you think? Is that it? Just them two? I have Cooper and Hilton. Those are my running backs. I could move J- uh, Smith Schuster yeah, to the there? flex. For, yeah, okay, that's put what I should do. Receiver, this is why I talked to Jacob about this stuff. But I'm so happy I'm not playing you this week. <laughs> but, and then Hilton. Yeah, I'm playing mom. Put Hilton. I have Jones in the flex spot, though. Mm-hmm. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Says you have him at receiver. Hold on. I don't know what I was just looking at. Well, I got a pretty stacked team. So I gotta move. Oh, wait a minute. And this is—I know this is very exciting radio right now. um, Oh, I see what I need to do. I see what I need to do. I need to move uh, Jones, Julio Jones to um the second or the first or second wide receiver spot um and then i need to move a running back or a tight end into the left flex spot yeah that should work mom only drafted players that she've heard of or no speak right into that mic for me dude yeah i know she did right Mm -hmm. (laughs) except like for defense sometimes that works though right i mean why let's talk about that so why do you know a player you know a player because they're good, yeah. right? So she knows a player, and she's she doesn't pay attention like we do. She loves football. Uh, we're really lucky that um, my, you know, my wife, Jacob's mom, huge football fan. She plays football, fantasy football with us every year. Um, she, you know, obviously is a football fan when it comes to being a parent. Uh, she loves watching the boys play football. Um, and so we're lucky in that. But why Why does she know about those players? She knows about them because they're, they're really studs. good. They're studs. They're in the news. They're in the headlines, that like, kind of thing. So, she drafted Brady. Yeah. Um, let me see. Brady, Bell. Goat. Johnson, Goat, baby. OBJ. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that she, she made decisions based on players she knows about, and she knows about them, again, because they're studs, uh, and they're, they make headlines. So that's not, that's not a bad, you know, that's not a bad strategy. Um, I am in two leads, I'm sorry, two leagues, so I just fixed my lineup for this week on our league, Jacob, so I got to do the other lineup um, off air, but I won't bore anybody. So, all right, we talked a little bit about... Um, college football our our nfl through our fantasy football um this is just a pint-sized perspective so we're going to end our we're going to end this soon but before we end it i want to talk to you jacob about playing football what do you like most about playing this the game of football defense defense what about defense i just want to get the ball i just want to tackle someone you just want to tackle someone. Yeah. You love that that the physical aspect of football. So want to get in the backfield and get hit. And I want to say, I you know, that's a great drive to have, a great attitude to have about football. That's amazing. But I want to say too, you are a very coachable kid. I've coached you in football um, for three years. And then this year, I'm helping out whenever I can, but I'm not the primary coach because I'm coaching Jacob Jackson. So if um, for more information on that, you guys uh, go ahead and listen to episode um, 42, which is sports parenting. I talk a little bit about coaching football in that episode. Um, but I will say, Jacob, you are technique-wise pretty good, man. Um, I think you have a great technique at tackling. You have a great technique at being a lineman. You're a defensive lineman, so you get in the backfield. You swim and rip and do all those technical moves to um, accomplish what you're trying to accomplish, which is which is get into the backfield and tackle the quarterback or tackle the running back or um, bust up the pass play. Yeah. Um, and so I want to shout you out for that because that's, that's, it takes skill, you know. So you're at your core, you like hitting people. Yeah. Right. You're Bobby Boucher, baby. That's what it comes down to. Like you're the Bobby Boucher. You just like hitting people. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what we try to do to avoid injury and reduce injury and to make sure you're you're safe is technique. And you are able to this is what makes you a really good football player, dude. You combine that raw drive to hit somebody with technique. Mm-hmm. And so you try your best to avoid injury. Not only on you, but the person that you're hitting, person you're blocking, person I've you're tackling. Never got injured once in 
Well, let's knock on some wood for that. You got banged up a little bit, right? There's difference between injury and hurt. Because in any sport that is a contact sport like lacrosse, hockey, uh, whatnot, you're going to get hurt, right? Yeah. That, and that just comes down with it. There's a little bruise here, a little banged up here, a little scratch here, whatever it is. Um, and you just need to listen to your body, talk to your coaches, talk to your parents, all that kind of stuff to make sure that you're safe. And there's, again, there's a difference between being hurt and being injured. And knock on wood, you've never been injured, but you know, you certainly could. And if you do get injured, you um, take care of yourself and do what you're supposed to do and do the recovery and get yourself back to where you need to be. Um, but I want to talk about the importance of being a good form tackler, being a good um, football player with regards to technique. You get your head to the side, you wrap up, you keep your he- your eyes up, your head is always up. Um, and when, you're, when your head is not up, what happens? Then you could get a concussion. Well, getting a concussion because, and you miss you the get, tackle. It's not ta- good technique. Yeah, you miss the tackle and then that's like one minus point because you missed it and that's a, they could have got it scored. Right? Yeah. And then you could also, if you're looking down, then you could head on head collision and then you could get a serious injury. injury. Yeah. Well, listen, um, yeah, and I think that that's really important to remember when you're when you're playing this sport. And so, I, again, just a shout out to you for being really tuned into um, the technique about your position and your sport. Uh, and that allows for you to be able to really enjoy this sport. Yeah, because I want to play. I don't want to get injured. Yeah. It's a short season. I mean, it's kind of a long season. It goes where we start practicing in August, goes all the way to um, late October, early November. So it feels like it's long, but you blink and it's gone. Yeah, we only right? have eight games. Eight games, yeah. And, and that and just, just, just flies by. Um, but it's, it's exciting. We're very, very early on in our season, but you've played your butt off. Um, you had... Um, a game last weekend and then we started our JV game. So our the youth football that we play um has teams that are made up of two different grade levels. Um it's basically third and fourth grade, fifth and sixth grade, seventh and eighth grade. Um and the younger grade traditionally is what we call the JV or junior varsity. Um this is the level that's the sort of developmental level, the learning level. Um this is the level that plays on Saturdays and scrimmage type games. The games don't matter. We do keep score, um, but the games don't matter. There's no playoffs or anything. And this is for development. Development, like learning the game, um working on skills playing time totally equal playing time all that kind of stuff so i think it's great that our, that our league offers this and you jacob are um you are a fifth grader on your team yeah fifth and sixth grade team i was um i just realized i was talking to the side of my microphone hopefully that i know hope <laughs> hopefully the audio is okay i'll take a listen um and so you know, you had a chance to play a little bit today, which is, uh, we're recording this on a Saturday, a little bit, um, a little bit today, and um, which is good because you're a fifth grader. But um, you are also this year playing up on the sixth grade level, um, uh, the more competitive uh, version of the league which is what we call the varsity they play on sundays um this is the one where the scores matter and the playoff this leads to playoffs and all that kind of stuff so um anyway you play today in the jv game you're going to play tomorrow in the varsity game so i'm really excited to see you go out there and have your second game and kick some butt and enjoy this game of football you excited about tomorrow's game very much so yeah Excellent. That's good to hear. So this is just a pint-sized perspective, buddy. We've been recording for about 30 minutes, believe it or not. Um, So do you have anything to add about the excellent, amazing, marvelous game of football? No, so just do it. Just do it. Just play football. It's fun. Watch football. It could take Um, like a couple months or weeks to get into it, but once you're like playing the games, having mm -hmm. fun, find out what position you're playing, then it gets way much more fun. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, we love this sport. Um, we love this season. And I know we talked about this in the last episode, but Jacob and I were hanging out in the house today. Um, Jenny is out and about. 
um, not home, we decided to flip on the recording system and record a quick episode about the amazing game of football. So go out there, uh, play football, watch football, become a football fan, lean into it, uh, and enjoy it. Anything else? No. All right, everybody. That is going to do it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, You can go ahead and just Google the NFL or college football, watch a football game, or join a fantasy football league um, to get more information on this. Go ahead and like us, review us, follow us. Check out changingperspectivesblog.com. You can send us an email to changingpodcast at gmail.com. Go ahead and subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. And we will see you next time. Say bye, Jacob. Bye, (laughs) Jacob. All right. Bye. Are you looking to level up in life with your health, mindset, and personal mission statement? Are you a coach of a sports team or leader of an organization looking to build critical leadership skills for your team? If so, then look no further than GetBurly.com. The GetBurly brand offers life coaching, personal fitness programming, and team building retreats, clinics, and seminars, all designed to empower individuals and teams to become the best versions of themselves. The Get Burley Team Building and Leadership Development Division works specifically with athletic teams, corporate groups, and educational institutions. Through their signature seminars, workshops, and or retreats, Get Burley will have your team firing on all cylinders and working as an inspired, cohesive unit committed to the mission and vision of your program or organization. Get Burley will build the inner strength necessary for you and your team to gain clarity around your mission input strategies to enhance mindfulness, amplify personal accountability and ownership, and much, much more. Do yourself and your team a favor and visit GetBurly.com. Get Burly. Be the best version of you. The Changing Perspectives podcast is produced, recorded, and edited by Dizzy Bird Studios. Please visit Dizzy Bird Studios on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dizzy Bird Studios.